Hello guys, making magic here. And today, uh, in this tutorial, another horror series tutorial will be creating a near jump scare, as you may see in the intro. So, what we'll need is uh, Unity, of course, Unity 3D, and uh, that's all. Just a bit of developing skills there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit sick today, so I'm off school and I'll be able to make t more tutorials, uh, I guess, today and tomorrow also. Uh, and I'm very excited what we'll be doing t tomorrow. So yeah, uh, let's just open up Unity and get right into it. Uh, this is actually what the final product will look like. You can see anything because the model... Then our enemy spawn, so let me just delete those few things that will be in the final product. Okay, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> not that much, right? Okay, so uh, what we need to create first is a spawner, the point where the, our enemy will be spawned. So go to game object, if you want to create a new scene, of course, new scene, game object, create empty. We're gonna place this object wherever we want our enemy to be spawned, of course. So let me just position it, position it properly. What am I doing? Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, so we want our object to be. Uh, spawned right somewhere on the floor because the object we'll be dealing with I created a monster I don't know it's a monster it's a, like a, more like a psychopath looks a bit of a psychopath uh, was made in blender and make human and it's kinda his end point his center is below his feet so one spawning near the floor so somewhere here would be okay and I want to rename this, I'm going to rename it. Uh, I'm going to name it Spawner. Okay, so Spawner it is. Now we're going to use a script I made for our Spawner. It's called Amnesia Scare. Okay, yeah, very, very creative name. I know. So, uh, okay, when you open up the, the script, the first variable will be variable monster. So this is where our monster will be placed, our monster prefab. A transform we're using because we'll be probably, if you would change its rotation, the transform is better than the game object because transform means that it is, it's, we could transform its position, transform its location, you know. Uh, I don't know how to explain really. So by instantiating in the function jump scare, we are calling that will be spawning it and will be spawning the monster as you can see here and will be transforming its position and transforming the rotation it means that we'll be spawning it on the exact same location as this object is so and with the exact same rotation uh, so okay now I wanna close this one and just place it on a spawner game object just drag it off drag it on and another thing that uh, another thing we're gonna place the monster on a transform space over here so you wanna uh, go to the link I will be it will be in description and there's a link to the f media file download of a, of a unity package and you just double click the package and uh, just import it into unity and when you do that you will get a folder like this and there will be three models uh, two skins for for the character two different skins a bit different and a sound effect, scare sound effect. So this is a complete prefab. You don't need to do anything. You can just drag it in, and it will work. It's a ragdoll of a of our psychopath. So you just drag this on the monster transform, okay? And it will work. It has an audio source that will play on awake it, to to do a bit of an atmosphere right there, and it uh, it is like a dead man. It you will see. Uh, what the model looks like in the final product. 
So another thing we want to do here is when I go to game object uh, and create a 3D object in the cube. I want to drag it in. So this will be our trigger. So I want to rename this one trigger. Okay, that's great. So where's the game object? Our spawner. It's over here. So this will be in front of our spawner. Okay, somewhere like this. I want to just scale it up. We could. It won't be visible. So now what we want to do is click on its trigger and click off the mesh render. Actually, we can just remove the component. And uh, we did that. So another thing we have to do is add our second script. So go to uh, uh, actually to the link and the description and just copy the content of this script and just paste it in JavaScript file. So it's called scare trigger and just drag it on. Now we're gonna double click our scare trigger and uh, I'm gonna quickly explain this one. This one is a bit longer, but still a very short script. So in the variable script, there will the game object with the spawner script will come here will come, and in the function start, we will get the component, the script, uh, our game object will get a component amnesia scare from our game object script. So that's you know our spawner script, and then on the uh, when we will enter the trigger. That trigger that the script is on, uh, that trigger will check. The script will check if our player is tagged player. So call the game object the tag is player. Call is our object that will walk into the script. Let me just pause here. I need to do something real quick. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a quick. I did just a quick check on something. Very important for school. Uh, so it will uh, check if our player is that player, our first person controller, and then it, if it will be, it will call function copy. So in the function copy, our script, it will again check, check our, uh, if on that game object, our spawner, there is a component, a script called amnesia script, and it will call a function jump scare on our spawner game object, and then after it does this, when it calls jump function jump scare, which is here over here, it will instantiate the monster, of course, and it will destroy itself. It will destroy the script. So yeah, pretty basic script, but it's effective and it works. So let's close this up and let's tag our first person controller. Player, you just go to tags. It's oh, there already is a tag player, so just add tag player. And uh, now uh, it should work. However, the rotation. Oh, okay, another thing. Yes, here we have to go to the spawner, to the trigger, and drag the spawner object onto the script. So now, when we play, it should work. And as you can see. It instantiates our monster, but it's not facing our direction. So to do that, we just have to rotate the spawner into our direction, which is 90 on the z-axis. How I know that? Because if you go to rotation, you can see the blue uh, the blue arrow should be facing us in our case because in the blender it was positioned uh, 90 degrees on the y-axis. I mean, it's positioned on a right. So now, when I change the rotation to on the Y to 90, it should face us, as you can see, and it works quite well. So let me just show you the monster. You can see, yeah. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new, and hope you can implement this in your game. Hope it was a bit more creative than other tutorials, because uh, I don't want to do a basic. Jump scare. So yeah, and I hope you'll enjoy the model too. So like, comment, subscribe, and bye of course, and share. Bye.